Hey everyone, it's Kyle at KC Electrics. I got a great new build video out today. Custom Telecaster build as part of the great guitar build off of 2020, where little workshops like myself go up against the big guys. You got Texas Toast, Brad Angove, 3x3, Jimmy Darista, Dan at Guns and Guitars, Derek at Big D Guitars, and of course, Crimson Guitars, we're coming after you. Uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support recently. We're at close to 250 subscribers now in just two weeks. It's been amazing. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. More great content coming your way on guitar builds, tool reviews, workshop reviews, uh, anything and everything guitar setup. Uh, if you're just a guitar lover, I think you'll enjoy as well. So please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and uh, makes me, you know, want to give you guys more and more entertaining content. So let's get right to the build and thanks again all right to start out here I'm uh, using some zinc really small number 18 nails and I'm gonna put two in here just on either side of the truss rod at the front and back of the neck now the purpose of this is you'll see I'm gonna clip these pretty short and really they're just used as alignment pins for when I want to put the fretboard on during glue up typically when you glue up something like a fretboard to the neck you put a decent amount of glue, uh, wood glue on the, the actual board and uh, that tends to want to slip around a lot when you actually start to clamp it down. So these just act as little alignment pins and keep the fretboard aligned to the outer uh, surface of the, the neck itself. So it's a little trick. I learned this actually from uh, Fletcher Guitars. Uh, he's a great resource that's online on YouTube. Uh, he hasn't made any new videos in probably a few years now. but. He's got some really great uh, tutorials basically on how to build guitars and I've actually learned a lot from him. So you can see there I actually align the fretboard and then I make a little mark where the first alignment pin go, uh, goes into the fretboard and then I drill a hole there to, uh, to actually set it in. And then I move to the back side here and do the same thing. I just kind of press on it lightly, make a little indent on the back of the fretboard and uh, then go out and drill a little hole for that. Now of course I'm not drilling all the way through the fretboard just enough that the alignment pin can go in there. And this doesn't have to be absolutely accurate because once we glue up the fretboard uh, we'll go back and we'll actually uh, shave the edges down just a little bit so it's a perfect match. And you can see here prior to glue up I'm gonna sand with some 80 grit sandpaper on the back of both the fretboard and on the neck just so I have some good adhesion here when I go to glue it up. So the next step here is to tape up the neck. Now, this isn't 100% necessary. However, it does make your life a little bit easier when you go to do the final cleanup of the neck. A lot of the glue squeezes out um, onto the neck and it's difficult to get it out of the wood. And the other thing is if, if you don't get it out completely before you do your finish, it will tend to show up as a kind of a discoloration after you apply either a lacquer or uh, if you're using true oil or, or tongue oil or anything of that nature, uh, the glue can actually absorb some of that a little bit different than the wood does and you get a weird looking discoloration on it. I also cover up the truss rod uh, channel here and that's just to allow no glue to get into the truss rod channel. So. Um, that's a good step. You, you don't want to bind up the truss rod because of course it needs to move throughout the years uh, in order to adjust the neck's uh, straightness or if you want to add some relief. It's always good to make sure that you kind of plan out how you're going to clamp anything up. And so here what I'm doing is I'm checking the height of each clamp against the boards I want to use. And um, that just allows you to make sure that you're not going to have any mistakes because this stuff dries within about probably five or six minutes especially here in Alabama where it's really hot right now and so here I'm actually applying the glue and I, I put a liberal amount on now this might be a little bit of a controversy most people remove the tape from the truss rod channel before they actually glue up the fretboard I don't I, I tape as thin as the truss rod channel itself and so there's plenty of surface area for glue and guys I've done this a couple times and I've never had an issue uh, so hopefully you agree with that but if not that's fine to each their own this works for me and uh, I've never had a problem now uh, the glue here I'm using is type bond 2 and there's lots of different glues you can use but type bond works great uh, it, it's super strong it's never gonna come apart here if unless you destructively do it so here, this is what I was mentioning on the tape. I'm actually removing it, and you can still see there's glue squeeze out, but 
Uh, once it's dry, you can just go with a sharp chisel or even like a little painter's spade and you can just chisel it right off. And then you can use a cabinet scraper, which I'm using here, to actually clean up the edges. And it leaves you with a really nice smooth finish and you can see there we had a really good bond line. Here I'm just doing some final sanding just to get some of the, the leftover glue residue. There wasn't much after the crab cabinet scraper though. Now here I'm, I'm just drilling some really tiny holes where the tuners will go. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm about to uh, reduce the thickness of the headstock and I want to make sure that I have some guide-in holes here for when I drill the actual ones. And so I, I just use a little, I think it's maybe a 1 16th drill bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything huge. And then here I'm marking out with a marking gauge how thick I want to, uh, or, or what thickness I want to remove from the headstock before I go to the bandsaw. This doesn't have to be perfect here. Uh, we're going to go to the sander and actually level this out once we're done. So the cut doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You can see here, it's easier than me doing this on the bandsaw. I just take a little, um, I guess, Japanese saw there and, and cut off the end. And then here, this is what I was saying with the, the sand in. I just go over to a belt sander, it's perfectly level, and I just ride the headstock on there until I get it all flattened out and get all the bandsaw marks removed. And that works fine for this application. Uh, what you don't see on camera is I do check the thickness every once in a while to make sure that I'm actually getting what I want. And then here I go over to my other uh, sander, and it's a, it's a spindle sander that's a one inch diameter. Here I'm actually applying the curve, and there's a there's a mark that I've drawn on here where I actually want to route out or or not route out but sand out the the curvature, and so uh, that's what I use this, the spindle sander for san sp blah, 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 spindle sander for. Here I'm actually freehanding kind of the look I want for the outline of the headstock. It's pretty close to a standard telly, but I don't have a template, so I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a custom guitar, um, so it's okay if it's a little bit off. No one's going to notice. Um, and anyways, I can maybe make it look a little cooler than the original Telecaster. Here, I'm just bandsawing that out, and then going back over to the orbital sander and um, cleaning it up and just getting it back down to the line here. And again, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of to your own cons or your own um, you know idea of what you you think looks good here, and so you can play around with it if you want. And there's multiple ways you can do this. You could actually do this with a template if you had one, and use a router, to, to, a trim router, to clean it up real nice and get it perfect. Um, so there's multiple ways. Okay, so here we're getting into the actual shaping of the neck now. I'm using a Shinto rasp here. That's what that's called there. That's a it's a Japanese Shinto rasp. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the the comments below. But um, essentially, on one side it's got a really rough grade of teeth, and then on the other side it's a little bit finer. And so I start out with the really rough, and all I'm doing in the beginning is I'm trying to cut down on the corners and just kind of round them off a little bit. And then you can see every once in a while I'll take a piece of uh, really thin sandpaper and I've made basically a long strip of it and I just use it to kind of start making the C shape that I want for the neck. Now this takes quite a while. This is sped up quite a bit. This is like 15x <laughs> the real speed. So this took me probably about an hour total uh, to get it right and so it's just literally a matter of going back and forth between the rasp and maybe some files and the sandpaper and just smoothing out how you want. I do a lot of it by feel. I also have a um, template that I bought from Stumac that is for a 59 telly neck, a C shape. And so I use that to check every once in a while at the, the first, the seventh, and the twelfth fret. But again, it, it's really more for feel. So uh, every once in a while you'll see me you know, rolling my hand over the back of the neck to try and get it to how I would like it, you know, when I'm playing and then kind of smooth it out that way. And so um, it's really a little bit of personal preference, but I do try and stick pretty close to the C shape. Now, when you get up to the heel and the headstock, it's a little bit more of hand shaping, and there is where you can be a little bit creative and you can do your own thing. Um, you, you know, you just basically get the shape you want by sanding it down over and over. You can use the file with the rasp and, uh, and get the shape that you really want in the end. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go back and using a 10 millimeter drill bit, 
I'm gonna drill out the tuner holes here. And you'll see that after every one, I kind of stop and then I align the the hole up with the the new 10 millimeter bit. And this is so you can get really straight alignment of all your tuners on the headstock. You don't want one that's slightly off because then it will look kind of wonky and it'll be really noticeable. So you want to take your time on this. You don't want to speed through it. I also have a backer board there, which is that little piece of white pine. Um, and all that's there for is so that the back of the mahogany on the neck doesn't actually blow out and give you a really nasty hole on the back end. Um, so you can use that as a little trick to make sure they get clean holes. And then here, this is uh, the process that you don't always see on video, but there's a lot of cleanup in my shop. I'm really OCD about cleanliness, especially in my workshop. And so I always try and clean it up after everything's done. Here you can see the final neck and uh, I think it turned out really great. I might try and uh, sharpen up the edges on the, the very front of the headstock and on the heel just to make it a little bit more defined, but overall it turned out really great. I'm really happy with it. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.